Hey, Sean. I've been excited to make this video for a while. I've been, I was excited for Apple to release their M1 Max. I've, I've known they were coming. And I've had this 2000, late 2015 iMac that has been the lifeblood of my business. I've edited every project that I've, I've delivered for a client on this computer. I love this thing. When I got it, I maxed it out to the absolute top of every available option. And it has lasted and it continues to edit. And as I was wondering, how would this M1 compare? My biggest concern was not export times, and every comparison seemed to be about export times. And you take in this 15 minute 4K video, and this exports it in 22 minutes, and this exports it in 21 minutes. And I don't care about that. If you're anything like me, when you're editing, as soon as you're done, you click export and you walk away. You go do something, you take a break, and you come back and it's done, and it doesn't matter if it's 10% faster. What I wanted to know is, what could this handle with resolution and bitrate before it starts to stutter playback and really require proxies? Because for me, when I'm trying to turn things around quickly, especially YouTube videos, with this computer lately, as I've been recording in 4K with the A7S III in 10-bit 422, if I add that to this computer, I can't play it back at all. It is so choppy that I can't really tell where, where I'm cutting and I'm looking at waveforms and taking guesses. So I have to convert everything to a proxy first edit it, then switch it back to the original footage and do all of my color correction and things like that. So it's been cumbersome. So I wanted to do a head-to-head -head test of just how they edit. What is the editing experience? And I'm not worried about any rendering times or anything like that. And so to level the playing field, this is what I'm doing. I have a project on this Samsung SSD 860 EVO, which is a, a laptop hard drive, but I use it as an external. It's it's flash, it's solid state, it's awesome. I'm gonna be using this USB adapter that takes it to a USB-A to plug it into my Mac. And while I have one of these that goes to USB-C, to keep things fair, I'm just going to use this same adapter and adapt it with Apple's USB-A to USB-C adapter to fit it in the Thunderbolt port because that is the one little headache of this little laptop is it only has two ports two Thunderbolt ports. And so rather than use a different adapter and maybe that affects the speed or something, everything will be throttled first by this and anything else downstream can only add problems. It's not gonna speed this up. So we're gonna try playing back some footage, some pretty intense multicam clips and see how the iMac here handles it. And then we're gonna play the same clips in the same project over here on this M1 Mac. So I'm gonna open up Final Cut here on the iMac. Now I'm using the most up-to-date version of Final Cut as well as the most up-to-date version of Mac OS on both of these computers. So I'm trying to keep everything as consistent as possible. But once we open up Final Cut, I have a project here called the Mac Comparison Library. And in this library, I have a bunch of footage um, from a bunch of different cameras. And I was I had several friends who were very nice to lend me their footage. I've got some red raw footage uh, in 5K. I've got some footage from the new Canon C70, some footage from the Canon R5, the 8K footage, as well as a bunch of footage from my Sony a7S III at varying bit rates. And so I just wanna walk through real quick that there is no, if I click on the library, there is no optimized or proxy content. So. No computer is cheating, and in fact, I'll do the delete generated files, let's delete all render files, optimized and proxy, okay. So everything's gone. With Final Cut, you have two options. If you pull down your view menu, you can either do better quality or better performance. And with better performance, it degrades the resolution just a tiny, tiny bit, but it makes it so that it plays back a little smoother. And so when I'm editing, typically I use this setting. Um, just because when I export it, it's gonna export at full strength, but it just makes it always easier to play back, especially as my footage has gotten more complicated. Um, this is also where you select proxy or optimized original, and you can see we're doing optimized original and there is no optimized footage. So my timeline here has, this first clip is a clip from the C70 uh, that my buddy Dane sent me from Colorado. And you can see it's playing back smoothly. We're not dropping any frames really. It seems fine. Uh, this is a 4K file in H.264, I believe. There's a little jitter to it if you see that. Um, it's not perfectly smooth, but I'll take it um, on better performance. Now this next file is a red file, 5K, and it starts pretty smooth. We see the confetti drop. So yeah, we're looking pretty good. Uh, then these files are from the a7s3 and we're 
starting to add some slow motion to it. This is my son and my wife walking down the street at 120 frames per second. This is the all intra frame recording, 600 megabytes a second. So it's a pretty beefy file um, and it's playing back fine. And then lastly, this is an 8K file from the Canon R5 that my buddy Poncho sent me. And as you can see, that is, I'm gonna move my hand here so you can see. My hand is moving smoothly. This footage is just unusably choppy. So the next thing I wanna show you is that if I create a multicam file, and here I've got this test multicam clip, which just has four of these 4K files. So a lot of times when I'm editing, this is what I'm looking at. And if I try to play this file, let's hang on, let's go back to the timeline and we will add this to the end of this timeline. Now, as I play this back, there's a little bit of a jitter, even in the better performance mode, but it's watchable, it's doable. Um, I'm gonna open up the multicam viewer and close my browser. And so this is gonna be previewing four 4K streams as well as the, the large video there. And I press to play. And yeah, this is, I'm moving my hand here so again you can see that the camera's not freezing, but this is what I'm up against. And this is, this is where it gets difficult to edit because when you're trying to cut between things, when you're trying to do, to do editing across multiple 4K streams, this computer just cannot do it. And so this is where I have to, even on better performance mode, this is where I need proxy media to make something happen. The last practical example I wanna show is a library that I do my YouTube videos in. And this is a video I did about tying my shoes. And so this is a single clip that I recorded in 4K, 10 bit, 422, 100 megabit per second in the H265 codec. And you can see the multicam clip here is actually just two copies of the same clip, I just want, one is zoomed in, one is, is not. And so that's all I'm cutting back and forth between. And when I try to play it with this preview, you can see that my face here isn't, isn't keeping up with, with the audio at all. And even when I first start, there's a delay in the audio sort of skipping. And so if I'm trying to edit this and trying to find my ins and outs, it's really difficult to do so. And you can hear my fan is now spinning full, full speed here. Um, and some of this is because of the H.265 codec, which is a, a more highly compressed file. So there's smaller files, which mean that the computer has to work harder to read them. But they're better files. You can fit more data in the same amount of space in the same bit rate. You can fit more data uh, and they have different theoretical limits. So this is the future of the standard video file. Um, and it looks great. And this has, let's see here. Yeah, this has no color correction on it. There's a camera LUT that's applied, but that's the only thing here. There's no other layers of correction and it just won't play back smoothly. So this is the state of affairs on the 2015 iMac. It'll chop through most things without a huge problem. But once you're trying to edit two streams of anything, especially modern footage, it just starts to stutter. So I'm going to take this exact same library and pull it up here on the M1 Mac. This is the M1 Mac pulled up with the same projects and I'll just show you real quick that over here in the inspector there still is no optimized or proxy media files. Um, so everything here is playing um, using the original files. We are on better performance to keep things fair. Um, and as I pull this up, this test footage library, this opening part, we've got our clips. Our first clip is from the C70. And get out of multicam view, we'll hide that. So this clip from the Canon C70 from my buddy Dane in Colorado is playing back smoothly. There's no stutter. And actually looking at this, I thought there was a tripod shake when I was looking at it on the iMac, but there was a slight stutter to this footage. Um, and this is at 400 megabits per second, this footage. So pretty intense. Um, and this is playing it back so smoothly that I didn't realize it was choppy at first until I saw it this smooth. Um, next up is the red 5K footage. And this is coming out of the uh, red raw codec directly. Nothing has been converted yet. This is a nine to one compression ratio in 5K. And yeah, there's no stutter there. 
Then we got some footage from the A7S III in slow motion. This is 60 frames a second. And then we've got, this is 120 frames a second at the 600 megabits, all inter-frame recording. This is like the beefiest thing that the Sony A7S III can do. And this is playing back perfectly smoothly. That's fine. Now this next bit, this is the 8K file from the Canon R5, a pretty beefy, crazy file. Um, let's just see what it does. Wow. Wow. So it did start to stutter there a little bit at the end, but in general, that's a that's an editable clip. You could come through here and and find your edits, and even to scrub through it is pretty remarkable. Yeah, 8K footage from the R5. I'm calling it editable without a proxy on the M1. Now lastly, we have this multicam clip that has four different streams of 4K 10-bit 422 in it. Um, and so let's give this a shot. So smooth it first. Do an okay, I saw a little stutter. Okay. Okay, he is stuttering a little bit with his footage, not his not his inflection or his, his speech patterns, um, but the video is stuttering a little bit there. So yeah, without proxies, four simultaneous streams of 4K 10-bit 422 does seem like it's making it stutter, but I will say that some of this could be from the transfer speed of the hard drive. In my test, the, this hard drive is attached to here with a drive speed read of around 380 megabits per second. So if we're doing four streams at 100 bit, that's already past the theoretical maximum that this can even transfer data onto the computer. So I'm not surprised by that. And I think if there was a faster hard drive and a faster connection, or if this were on the internal drive, there's a chance that it could edit without stuttering. They could play back without stuttering. I don't know, and I'm not gonna test that right now. The last test I am gonna do is my little YouTube library, and this is what stuttered before. This is my tying my shoe video. So here we have the tying my shoe library, and this is the two streams of 4K 10-bit 422 that are playing back, and it's cutting back and forth between the same clip, but this is what on the Mac, uh, on the iMac wasn't playing it w without just really, really stuttering and making it really hard to actually follow what's being said. But this is playing back perfectly smoothly. Yeah, this is an editable file. That works. So looking at the two things, I think it's pretty clear that on a practical level, the M1 MacBook Pro is a lot smoother with playback of a lot more files and a lot bigger files. And it handles projects that would need proxies on this quad core Intel i7 4 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of RAM versus the eight gigabytes of RAM and the M1 here. So definitely as the, as the computers get better, and you have to remember, this is the first Mac processor that, that, that they've done in their own computer, which means this is the worst one they'll ever make. Everything after this is only going to get better and faster. And so with the worst Apple processor that's ever been put in their own laptop, it's chewing through this footage like it's not that big of a deal. And so it's only going to get better. And I'm glad that we're going to be at a point where the computers are going to exceed what the cameras are, are capable of doing right now, which means that editing will be a, a lot easier because you won't need proxies as often to edit projects. And so I'm calling it, I really, really like the M1. I'm not going to compare the export speeds again. For me, not having to convert proxies is a huge time saver way more of a time saver than any time saving of, of the export might be. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, if you have any, uh, any tests you want me to do over the next few weeks, I'm going to dive in and really stress test this thing to see what footage it can handle. And at what points it really starts to suffer. And I'm going to do some stuff on the internal hard drive. So we're not limited by the transfer speed to see what this processor can really do. So if you have any ideas or any questions, throw them in the comments and I'll do my best to address them in these next videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye.